Hello everybody, here I am again. Um, uh, I haven't looked up the exact verse, I think it's actually in Matthew, Mark, Luke, maybe John, maybe not John, but I think it's in, it's, it's in multiple, uh, it's in the Gospels more than once, when, it, when Jesus says something along the lines of, are you all still so dull? You know, that then like uh yeah i think i was kind of having one of those days yesterday like are you all still so dull um specifically talking to anybody who has their own youtube channel and is aware of me and isn't helping to share things um and then I think he goes on to say something along the lines of, uh, how, how long will I have to put up with you? Or something along those lines. So I'm not trying to add words or take words. You can look it up for yourself. But almost like he realized that he was eventually going to get to leave the dullness. Like, not that they were going to become sharp, just that he was going to leave. And they were going to remain so dull that that's kind of the day i was having yesterday and i'm just gonna there you go so anyway uh <clears throat> let's see <sighs> it's interesting when malachi wrote about the coming elijah um Well, the Jews of back in the day believed in it. They put stock in it, like they had faith in it. And when Christ showed up, well, they thought maybe that was him. Like, he was the, the guy that would restore everything, you know? Like, <clears throat> so, nah. Um, so, uh, you know, at the time that the Messiah comes... Everyone's looking for the coming Elijah. And at the time that the coming Elijah comes, well, everybody's looking for the return of the Messiah. See, everybody's got it backwards twice, over. It's the same story all over again, basically, just told in a different way. And, and the interesting thing about it is, is, you know, I mean, I don't want to talk about myself. I actually can't stand it. But it's the one topic in which everyone is so ignorant about like how is it that everyone reads through the scriptures and doesn't comprehend what's going on there like our father is not the author of confusion and i've pointed out where these small little details of confusion that exist those are jeremiah 8 8 and the fact that everyone that puts stock and believes in and has faith that the scriptures are all god breathed well, if everybody, well, then why isn't everyone getting along, like agreeing? If, uh, you know, it should be just like a the the old playbook play. You know, like it, we all agree that, but we don't. Like there, everybody, it it doesn't matter. You can have ten million people that all agree that the scriptures are true, but that doesn't mean they'll agree on anything in there that's why we have all these different sects of sects of religion like the mormon and the muslim and or i mean the mormon and the and the uh you know jehovah's witness and the baptist and the catholic and the you know whatever the list goes on and on the amish the quaker whatever etc 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 all these christian religions because they don't agree upon how it is because there's some confusion and our father is not the author of confusion and i'm here to back it up with what is the real deal and i lay it out in front of everybody to in an in a way that well yet no one has stepped up to plate and tried to even try to rebuke me on their own specific channels they might st be stabbing me in the back but but uh 
no one no one even dares say my name on their channel in a pro or con way even though it's pretty obvious when people are sidestepping talking to me you know it's just it's actually pathetic but anyway so malachi he writes about the coming elijah and you know and uh even to the degree of when when christ says who do you say that i am or who do they say that i am and they're like some people say that you're the you know the coming elijah and uh, so you know the people of the time that's who they were looking forward to him showing up but he didn't show up because the messiah showed up they were waiting on the wrong guy so you know <clears throat> It doesn't matter how this man is referred to in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's referred to in different ways. Sometimes, like in Isaiah and Jeremiah, he might be referred to as like Jacob or Israel. It's like the coming Jacob or the coming Israel. Not the one that already existed. Not their forefather, not their ancestor, but a different one. It's, it's so obviously there. It's so obviously there. And, uh, so, <clears throat> unlike all of you who are, whatever you're doing, you might be running a country, you might be running a business, you might be, you might work for the United Nations, you might work for FEMA, you might be a preacher or a pastor or whoever, Years and years and years and years before Christ was ever born, Isaiah, let's say, he writes about Christ, and he writes about me. You see? Like our Heavenly Father put his reputation on the line when he told Jeremiah to write about this guy when he told Isaiah to write about this guy, when he told Ezekiel to write about this guy. Our Heavenly Father's reputation was on the line because he had faith in me. Do you see that? It's got, you all are all grasping for faith, trying to get a hold of it. Like it's out of your reach. And I could prove this. It's provable. It, it comes down to if you have faith, you have no fear. And you all have fear. It's obvious. So, when he puts his, when our Heavenly Father puts his reputation on the line and says, write about this guy, he will be. Now, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, whoever, Malachi, they lived in their whole entire life and died of old age and never saw that become true. But they knew, they believed in it. They put stock in it. Judea put stock in it. Maybe the Israelites put stock in it. But our Savior was sure of it. Yeah, even with his own mouth. Our Savior had faith in me. Do you understand? Not only did God have faith in me, our Savior had faith in me. Do you see? Like, so I don't really care whatsoever. And like I said, I'll start over with everybody who was too young to be vaccinated. With orphans. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not on a timeline to restore everything. I can't work with old wineskins. You need to get the new wineskin so you can receive the new wine. Or you're just kindling for the fire. You're part of the wheat. You're part of the wheat plant. You're not part, you're not the grain. You're the chaff that we scrape up and throw out there with the bu bundles of the weeds that we set on fire off the threshing floor. You're no more than that. See, because you, you're, you are deaf. This is everyone. This is Biden. This is Kamala Harris. This is Vladimir Putin. This is all you small-time YouTubers who just want to remain blind guides, blind guides, walking right off the bottom, right off the edge of the cliff, it's the bottomless pit, and you're doing it, and you're leading those. The Pope, 
all these religious leaders, all you YouTube leaders. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> unlike all of us, me included, who were born faithless in a faithless world and you had to obtain faith or never have it, well, I obtained it. My Savior spoke it into being when He was here 2,000 years ago. And some of the scripture that is God breathed through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, when they wrote down about me proving that our Heavenly Father had faith in me. So, between our Heavenly Father having faith in me, Christ having faith in me, it's real easy to find faith in me. I have an advantage. I had a total advantage, see? And it was still hard to grab hold of. See, I'm still a sinner. I'm still the disobedient, prodigal son, twice over. And it has nothing to do with me wanting the fatted calf. It actually has everything to do with our Savior didn't even get as much as a goat, see? But he did get to live his life knowing that he got to get away from all the dull, unsharp people that are so boring to be around. It's so dull. And he knew, let's see, I don't know, I'm like 12, 13 years older than he ever got to be. He got to leave. Like, a, I, I actually would have been, I'd trade him. You can be here stuck forever with dull people, forever, always stuck forever with dull people, Why well, I get to be here for just like 33 years and then I get to leave. That'd be awesome, you know? But no, I'm actually stuck here with dull people until there are no dull people left. And then, and then I can start to restore everything to its rightful way. But while I'm still working with dull, boring people who just don't comprehend much, all you world leaders who think I'm bluffing when I told you I had the winning hand, you're just digging your hole deeper. Like you're, What could have been a shallow hole that you're going to fall into is going to be like a bottomless, endless, bottomless pit that you fall into. And like I say, a wise man loves a rebuke. I sure would love a rebuke. I would love one. I'd love it. Like I crave one. My whole entire life, I've really never had one. People have tried. They've always failed. In fact, I can only think of three times that I've ever lost at anything. And none of those were rebukes. None of those were debates. I don't lose debates. I don't even lose arguments. I was the head coach of a, of a Little League football team where the zebras were paid off and the officiating was rigged. And so I lost two games only because the league that I was in was set up by the person who was going to win every Super Bowl, let's call it that, you know, year in and year out, no matter what. And the guy who taught me how to play chess, he beat me once, he beat me twice, he beat me three times when he was teaching me how to play the game and I was ignorant and I didn't know anything about the game. On the fourth game, I beat him, he threw the chessboard at me and never played me again. I smoked him. Like it finally sunk in what we're really playing here. So I learned on three games, I lost on all three and once I really understood the game, I've never lost another game of chess ever. Now random luck, there's some random luck things I've lost. If someone wants to make a stupid bet, I've done it. But any type of true competition, well, I just don't lose. I never have, never will. But it's not in the cards. I'm not a loser. See what I mean? Second place is the first loser, and I'm not there. See what I mean? I'm not there. And uh, you can't snuff out this candle. And if you try to put your hand above this candle in any way, shape, or form, it'll burn you. Otherwise, this candle is safe. It's just a nice source of light. This candle isn't out to burn anybody. 
Just don't try to put your hand above this candle or it will burn you. No hands above this candle, okay? Otherwise, everybody's good. Anybody tries to put their hands or put themselves in any way, shape, or form in some form of authority or anything like that, nothing, nothing's above this candle here. This light will burn you if, if you try to put yourself above it, okay? That. That's about it. Otherwise, it's a nice, safe light. I'm here to love everybody, I'm trying to pull you guys out of the sea of lies that you live in. Um, because my brothers and my sisters, they are perishing from lack of knowledge. I'm, I'm not going to do that, see? I'm not going to perish from lack of knowledge. That's up to other people who lack knowledge. I'm not going to do it. I suggest none of you do it. Get some faith. Might take a little bit of knowledge to get that faith. It actually did me. I actually had to knead the dough, which was the faith. And I needed it. And I needed it. For years and years, I needed it. And when I gathered enough knowledge to undisputably know it's all real, I'm convinced of it. It's been, our Heavenly Father has proven it to me time and time again. There's nothing left to prove. I'm here as His servant. I'm here as a servant to my Savior. I'm here as a servant to all. I love you all. I forgive you all. You all need to repent. That's all of you. Even myself. I'm not perfect. I'm not here to judge. I'm only here to measure. Measurements are easy to take. You, no one can avoid them. It just is what it is. It's just a gift my Heavenly Father gave me. There's things that I have that no one else has. And I want to share those things. Abilities that don't even have words for those things, like senses, like taste, smell, hearing. There's things that go beyond those five senses that it seems like nobody really comprehends or understands, but there's no way to even explain it. You just need to obtain it. The Holy Spirit actually should have delivered that through to everyone, but there's a faith blocker, an anti, the lack of faith blocks you from receiving everything. You can receive the Holy Spirit and still not actually have faith, okay? All right? It is possible. You can be saved, guaranteed to go to heaven. Doesn't mean you have faith, see? You could stand up at the pulpit and preach all day long and never once be wrong, still. That doesn't mean you have faith. Faith sets the prisoners free. The ones behind bars and the ones that are prisoners here. When I see a preacher that's still a prisoner here, how's he setting anybody free when he's still a prisoner himself? Impossible. Our Savior, it's, I'm not saying that our Savior doesn't ha have faith in any of you. I'm not saying God, our Heavenly Father, the Almighty Creator, doesn't have faith in any of you. It's just not recorded in the scriptures like it is for me. It was actually recorded in the scriptures for me because my Savior and our Heavenly Father, both of them had faith in me. It's in the scriptures. It's right there. They had faith in me. Meaning, it can't not be. Do you understand? Any of you could do whatever you want. You could work for the devil. You could work for our, our Savior. You can choose which one you work for. It's not in the cards actually that way for me at this point. It just isn't. It can't be. They had faith in me. It was, it was written down. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John wrote about it. Again, in the, in the book of Revelations. Ezra wrote about it. Second Ezra. Jeremiah, see what I mean? Isaiah, Ezekiel, you know, you see what I mean? There's more about me in, in that book than there is about Jesus. Do you not, uh, does nobody understand it? Even Jesus didn't prophesy about anybody else besides me. 
Jesus as the prophet Jesus prophesied about no one other than me. That was it. And, and you guys read over it and read over it like you never even read it. Like it's not right there in front of your face. All these people preaching the Bible and you don't even have a clue of what you're preaching. And I'm trying to get you, to, by your words, you're condemning yourself and I can't get you to shut up. So it's just like, like I said, it's just going to come down to me walking around and scraping up widows and orphans and maybe some prostitutes or some porn stars, some, you know, maybe an IRS tax collector or two. I'm not going to be able to save these saints that I'm just, it's in the scriptures, the fifth seal, saints, done. No more saints. Yeah, all those who want to die in the name of the Lord that don't even, uh, don't even understand that you're supposed to be living in the name of the Lord. The only thing that I have no control over, and I mean the only thing I don't have control over, is, well, you could almost divide it into two things. Free will in everybody's deaf ears. You know what I'm saying? You know? My one prayer that will actually totally actually happen, and I don't even have to pray it, it's just in the scriptures this way, is that one day, however it be, whenever deaf ear is dead, or every deaf ear comes to life and becomes something that actually hears, I only have to deal with those for eternity, for the, from now on, like the new building block in which we start with people who make it in, that cross the Jordan and make it into the promised land. None of those people will be deaf anymore. Everybody else has to die. It's just how it is. I'm not, I'm, it's impossible for me to complete all my tasks working with deaf people, dull people, people who refuse to be sharpened. You know, a dull blade, worthless. Worthless, see what I mean? You have to be sharp. I'm looking around for those who might be sharp, not finding a whole lot. There's at least seven women out there in me. So we've, we've gotten that far in the scriptures. Isaiah 4, which actually should be the, those numbers are off. But it is Isaiah 4. It might just be that seven women, this one dude, and a bunch of orphans survive, and that's it. I don't mean, you know, it might be 144,000 orphans, something like that. Because I, ref I refuse to have one ham, one backstabbing ham, get on the ark. Do you see what I mean? That's not going to happen. Nobody's so dull that they hate knowledge fools hate knowledge everybody who doesn't want to hear what i'm saying when i'm pouring out knowledge undisputable unrebukable knowledge and nobody wants to hear it and nobody wants to share it fools 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 there's not much time left for you to stop being foolish Nation of Abraham, promise that will be fulfilled, and I'm here to see to it. That'll be all those people who aren't fools, all those people who aren't deaf, all those people who haven't taken the vaccine, all those people who haven't endorsed the vaccine, haven't produced the vaccine, haven't enforced the vaccine. Yeah, we're starting to get real, see, we're almost there, folks, we're almost there. It's awesome. See what I mean? And like, you know, it's like, it's not hard for me to have faith when, when our Heavenly Father has promised me so much more than anyone else ever. It's really easy to have faith. See what I mean? Like he's promised me more than he's promised anybody ever of all time. Or that he'll ever will. Do you see what I mean? So it doesn't really matter to me who gets on board with this idea. I didn't write the book. I'm just telling you what it says. Just like I told the police officer when they were letting me out of jail. Like when I went into court without a lawyer and all I did is jab my finger down on top of the Bible. Yeah. Nobody understands what I'm talking about. 
Nobody comprehends that I'm just here to love you. I'm trying to be like the Father, right? To be like the Son means you're trying to be like the Father. I mean, I'm trying to be the, the Father Hen that pulls the, all the chicks in for safety. That, you know? And uh, so the voice of the bride will not be heard in her anymore in the daughter of Babylon or in Babylon in falling and will have fallen Babylon is about to fall Babylon the voice of the bride will not be heard in her anymore so anybody who thinks they're part of the bride might want to get on board with what I'm trying to say here because I'm about ready to pull the fragments the remnants of the bride out of Babylon before she is destroyed, because the voice of the bride will not be heard in her anymore. Comprende? I'm telling you what, there's not one Christian YouTuber that's heard my voice that isn't going to hear, go away from me, for I know not who you are. If you don't hurry up and get real, hurry up, quit watching YouTube, quit making YouTube videos, and read your damn Bible. Because you're telling people stuff that ain't true. Rapture. Everything's just okay. We could start a new business, get some new cars, buy a new house. We're leaving, folks. We're leaving. Get real. Pull up them roots. <laughs> Who's rooting down right now?